This video is brought to you by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. And by RLS. RLS press fittings let you make a permanent and reliable mechanical connection in just 10 seconds without the need for brazing. The RLS press fittings were specifically designed and engineered for use in high pressure HVAC and refrigeration systems. They are fully registered and listed to UL207 for pressures up to 700 PSI. For more information, go to rapidlockingsystem.com. So today I'm helping a buddy out replace a heat pump split system. He's gonna be up in the attic doing the air handler while I'm doing the condenser. Let's do some work. So I've already got the system pumped down and the lines cut so he can go ahead and do what he's doing upstairs. Now I can get the uh, line voltage, low voltage removed, get this old unit out of the way and get the new one set. So check this out, when they ran the low voltage through, instead of using the factory grommet there, they drilled a tiny hole and just ran it in that way. That's crazy, I'm surprised there was never a short on that cable right there. Why you gotta make it harder on yourself? So when I'm working with other people, I always like to be as efficient as I possibly can so while they're up in the attic, I go ahead and get the air handler kind of set up for them. That way when they're come down to get it, they can just send it right up and uh, less work for them. Cause you know, ultimately they have more work to do upstairs than I do. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get the heater kit installed and then ask them what position the uh, coil needs to be. If it's horizontal right or horizontal left, that way it's ready to go for them. All right, so we're gonna have the same unit here going there. So we wanna make sure the orientation is the same. That way it looks really nice, which means the line set's gonna come in out of this corner. So we're gonna have to bend this along the house and then come around and go in like that. That way it looks nice and clean. All right, so a lot of people have been asking me if I picked a winner yet for the NAVAC giveaway. So here it is. The winner is Harry Papp from Pembroke, Massachusetts. Congratulations. I think he's going to really enjoy having these tools, the NAVAC flaring tool and the NAVAC hydraulic swaging tool. They're both amazing, and I think you're going to really enjoy them. So look forward to sending that to you here in the next week. But for all of you who did not win, just stay tuned because I'm going to be doing another giveaway before you know it. Okay, so what I'm doing is I measured how far this unit is off 
the edge, which is 13 inches, and I just matched it up over here. So that way when you're looking at the pad, the units look square and symmetrical to one another. Unfortunately, the disconnect is not dead center between. I would like that, but I think that's just the way I'm gonna to have to do it to where the equipment looks best. So that's the way I'm gonna roll with it. So basically what I need to do is extend the copper and bend it, come around and tie it in. Uh, I'm running a, a new whip that'll go along with the line set there. Should look good. So if you guys have been following the channel for a while, you'll know that I recently just got a new truck and I've been trying to get it set up to where I can work out of it. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. So this is the first version. I picked up this, uh, this new roll up top. This thing was actually pretty cheap. I got it for $200 off of Amazon and it is a roll up style. So you can just click it open. And then it just rolls. And then what I've done is that I've cut a piece of plywood, three quarter inch plywood to put on the bottom. I mounted three Milwaukee pack out mounts. And right now I've got a three drawer, a couple boxes there duck tools in that box back there. Then I've got these two totes. Just for refrigerant and whatnot. <clears throat> so this is literally, I just put this in a couple days ago. So I'm still working with how I want it set up. And I, I made sure I had just enough room to put a nitrogen tank right there. And it doesn't move, which is really nice. I have enough room to put a, to put a six foot ladder here if I want to. Um, and then I can also slide this thing out if I need to, but it's not really designed for that. I made it to where it was modular, where I can easily remove everything if I want to, because I, I like to ride dirt bikes and I can, I'll be able to put my dirt bike back here if I just, you know, take everything out. So, but yeah, so far I'm actually enjoying this. Keeps everything nice and dry. Whenever I lock the truck, the tailgate locks. So you can't get in here to, to open up the, uh, the topper or the, the cover. Obviously, if someone wanted to take a knife and cut it, they could. But typically, if they don't see anything in there, they're not going to want to try to open it up for no reason. So, but yeah, I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty happy with this so far. I'll be constantly uh, making tweaks to it to... Uh, adjust it to the you know to my liking so but i kind of just threw all this stuff in here right now in these totes um i still got to put my recovery machine in here and all the hoses that's going to be basically what this tote is for is refrigerant uh recovery process and then up here is is all <clears throat> my you know vacuum pump and benders and all of the smaller containers the rls press tool just basically all the all the tools I need to just, you know, grab one and go kind of thing. So, yeah, I'm liking it. Not bad for just eyeballing it. Probably need to tweak it out just a little bit to make it nice and straight, but that looks good. Now we just got two joints to braise on the suction line and do the same thing for the liquid line. So here's a little tip. Whenever you're gonna cut 
on some existing pipe that needs to be cleaned, what I like to do is mark it, then go ahead and sand it behind that line and then cut it. So that way I don't have to worry about sanding this after it's cut with an open end and possibly, you know, dust and dirt and whatnot getting into the pipe. So clean it first and then cut it. Okay, so I got everything piped in, ready to braze. I'm gonna go make sure they're piped in upstairs so I can flow nitrogen and get everything braised up. So if you look on the nameplate here, it'll tell you what the design pressure is. High side, low side. Because this is a heat pump, both the indoor and outdoor coil are designed for high side pressure. So if you see that 448 PSI, so that means when it comes to pressure testing, I like to get close to that number. So 400, 415, whatever, that's close enough. So if we're leak free at that point, we know we're good to go. So on these field piece S mans, they have a built-in test tightness feature. So what I do when I'm pressure testing, I go ahead, fill it up, uh, especially on a system that has an indoor expansion valve, I will open up both sides just to make sure everything gets equalized. And I'll let it sit there for a minute and just let everything kind of stabilize and uh, not move too much. Then I'll close it down on both sides and start my test tightness. To me, that seems to work out well. Instead of testing right away, just give it a moment, hold that down, we'll hit enter, and there we go. It starts to time it out and it checks the pressure difference there. I'll let this run for about 10 or 15 minutes 
make sure we have no leaks. So it's been 16 minutes and it's dropped 0.4 of a PSI. So I'd say we are good to go get this thing on the vacuum and finish getting it wired up. So on the low voltage wiring, these Yorks do it a little bit differently. So with 10K or below, we follow this diagram here. Uh, the difference is normally on you would send your W terminal, which goes to your electric heat, directly to your air handler. And then it also would tie coming out to the condenser. But on the York system, as you can see here, we send it from the thermostat directly to the W terminal on the heat pump condenser. And then there's a W out, which goes and connects to the air handler. So it's a little bit different um, than any other system out there. But again, you always want to read the manual, make sure you're doing it right. All right, so as you can see here on the board, you have a W, which is the white wire, and then the W out, which is the white wire with the brown line. So. Just gotta make sure you get all that wired up correctly so the the uh, electric heat will turn on and do what it needs to do. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do about a 10 minute DK test just to make sure the vacuum holds. Uh, it doesn't rise above 500 microns. So far, it's holding tight, so that's good. I'm gonna get this line voltage uh, completed and we should be getting close to starting this thing up. It's been about 15 or 20 minutes and it looks like we are holding good and tight so i'm gonna go ahead and remove the vacuum pump get some uh 410a over here and break the vacuum and then get these valves open and we should be ready to start it up all right so since i don't know how long this line set is what i'm going to do is i'm going to break the vacuum with about 80 PSI of some new R410. So what I'll do is I'll just, right now this is just standing pressure of the tank itself. So once I open this up and then shut that down, uh, we'll be able to see what the actual pressure is of the system. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add refrigerant until I get up about 80 PSI. That's gonna get me pretty close. And then I'll be able to open the valves and then adjust it from there. So I've already got the High side open. Now I just gotta open up the valve here. And what we can do is leave this open and then throttle it from this valve. So that way we get proper reading up here of the actual system. So we're at 67 now. We'll give it a little bit more.
Now this 80 PSI is just a rule of thumb that I have used over the years and it just gets me really close. So it doesn't matter how long the line set is because PSI is relative to the capacity. So um, again, this gets me very, very close and we can open up the valves now and get this thing started up. All right, so on this unit, we're running in heat mode. So if you look at the chart and you wanna check, it's a two and a half ton system and the air handler we have is an AP30. So this is the chart we're gonna be looking at. We are set at a thousand CFM and our indoor temperature is 70 and our outdoor temperature is 55. So we're gonna be looking in between these two columns here. So if we look at our liquid pressure should be between 383 and 352. So maybe maybe around 370-ish. And then our suction pressure should be between these two numbers here. So maybe 110, 115, something like that. That's what we're gonna be shooting for. And because we're in heat mode, what I'm gonna do is basically get the pressures to what the chart says. And then he's gonna come back in the springtime to do, uh, do a checkup on this system and then he's gonna fine tune the charge in the cooling mode. And to be honest with you, that is the proper way to do it. All right, so we've been running for about 15, 20 minutes. Pressures are looking pretty good. I think we're in good shape. I'll let it run for a little bit longer and uh, get everything cleaned up. So everything turned out pretty good. I'm really happy with the way this unit turned out. The charge looks good. The install looks clean. So I'm happy. It's been a nice sunny day, so can't complain. But that's gonna complete today's video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. You got something out of it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, see you guys later.